So, so severe hyperlipidemia develop. When so severe hyperlipidemia develops, then not only proteins leak, lipid also start leaking. What starts leaking? So, patient develop with all this thing, one more feature, and that is, yes, lipid, lipid, urea. So, primary problem was just heavy protein losses. So heavy protein losses that liver could not maintain the plasma protein levels. So resulting into hyperproteinemia, leading to generalized edema, right? By primary mechanisms and activation of activation of secondary mechanisms, which may be multiple secondary mechanisms. With that, hyperlipidemia and eventually translating into lipid urea. Meanwhile, you know, don't forget these funny cells. They're so stupid, they eat whatever they find. So previously they were eating the proteins and now they will take a big chunks on lipids. They become full of lipids and they will become loaded with fat globules. And of course, do you think this cell will be now very healthy? No, it's like a obese man. So what happens, these cells become dysfunctional and shut down and appear into urine. So in the urine, you may find some cells with a big fat globule. We call it fat oval bodies. What do we call them? Fat oval bodies. What are those? These are the proximal convoluted tubular cells loaded with the fat shed into urine. Am I clear? No problem up to this. Whole this picture is called nephrotic syndrome. Nephrotic syndrome. All this thing which happened to the patient number three is nephrotic syndrome. So how do you define now nephrotic syndrome? Nephrotic syndrome is a clinical pathological condition which develop when there is significant damage to the glomeruli which is leading to heavy protein urea. Heavy protein urea cutoff point is in adult 3.5 grams per day. Right? And that is associated with hypoproteinemia, generalized edema, hyperlipidemia, and even lipid urea. So we just say patient has nephrotic syndrome. Let's suppose, Abdul, you come here, please. Don't uh, focus on his pants, right? Now, so this suppose, we just suppose that this person has nephrotic syndrome. Is that right? He must have a lot of edema. He will have some more problems also. Not only this. Once I put the, okay, we'll talk the other problems later. Once I put the diagnosis that this patient has nephrotic syndrome, do you think diagnosis is really complete or not? No. It is not complete. Why it is not complete? If I say this is a patient of nephrotic syndrome, still you don't know what damaged the kidney. Did you know? Nephrotic syndrome only tells you one thing, this is a patient who has so much damage to his glomeruli that nephrotic range protein urea is there. Now in the discussion I will not call heavy protein urea. This heavy protein urea which lead to the whole this clinical pathological condition, good nephrologist will call this, patient has nephrotic range protein urea. And patient number two, patient number two, he had also protein urea, but maybe it was only two grams per day. And he did not develop generalized edema, he did not develop significant hypoproteinemia, he did not develop general, uh, hyperlipidemia or lipid urea. So second patient cannot be called nephrotic. So difference in second and third was that second patient has protein urea which is less than the nephrotic range. So we say what, what type of protein urea is this? Subnephrotic range protein urea. Subnephrotic range protein urea. And what is this? Nephrotic range protein urea. Is that right? I am clear. Just telling you that patient has nephrotic syndrome does not complete the diagnosis. You just know that there is damage to the glomeruli. But you don't know what thing is damaging that. What are the, what is really change histological and immunofluorescent changes in kidney? What are the immunological changes in the body? We don't know. What triggered this damage? 10 patients with nephrotic syndrome and each one may have a different cause of and different mechanism of damage to the 
glomerular. So we say that nephrotic syndrome is just a clinical phase of glomerular injury. It is a phase, but you don't know what's behind. It's just a phase showing you that there is some glomerular damage going on. The, the simple, these are what? What I'm discussing with you? I'm discussing with you the clinical presentation and clinical phases and clinical manifestations of glomerular injury. That with the slightest glomerular injury, the clinical presentation will be, or biochemical presentation, the urine will be selective protein urea. If there's more injury, plus two injury, you get non-selective protein urea, but if you don't have generalized edema or hyperproteinemia or hyperlipidemia or lipid urea, then you do not have nephrotic syndrome and we say this protein urea is subnephrotic range. And in this case, we say protein urea is so heavy that it has turned the whole patient's pathophysiology into nephrotic picture. So this is a patient with nephrotic syndrome. Now you understand the whole nephrotic syndrome that there is significant damage and result is heavy protein urea, hyperproteinemia, generalized edema, hyperlipidemia and lipid urea. Then there is more to this thing. Actually not only albumin leak in nephrotic, some other small molecular weight proteins also leak down. For example, one of the very small molecular weight protein is transferrin. What is that? Transferrin. And if nephrotic syndrome lasts longer, I told you different patients have a different reason of nephrotic syndrome. So some patient may develop nephrotic syndrome only for a short time. And some patient may have nephrotic syndrome for years and years. If you have nephrotic syndrome for a long time, you're losing the transferrin. Transferrin is a protein which transfer iron in the blood. So iron handling in the body will be normal or abnormal? Abnormal. abnormal. So patient may develop iron deficiency anemia. But only in the chronic cases of nephrotic. Then another protein which leaks down the system is antithrombin 3. This is a protein which prevents the undue 